Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clue Say Trading. Frank, we have a special uh, free algo uh, quad, algo HFT, that's algorithmic high-frequency trading program charts that I, that I produce. Um, trading, we're going to go over a whole bunch of things that I use. And I'm certainly not a full expert yet. I don't know anyone can become an expert in this type of in this type of uh, algo HFT type of charting. But the best we can do to get uh, read it and and act on it, then obviously we benefit tremendously. So this session is going to be recorded. It will be uploaded on the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel, which I remind everyone who listens to this video cast that they need that they should just for free as it is in Google subscribe to it. Give it to your friends, give it to anybody who wants to learn a little bit and understand the dynamics of what we do and why we're so successful in what we do is you can be you can listen to any of the free video casts that are uploaded on the YouTube on the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. And let's start. So for the next hour or so, I'll try to keep this exactly to the point. Hi, Exita. Um, is we are going to try to cover as many important details as possible as to how I do this thing. And believe me when I tell you that I am constantly improving on the techniques of how to read and act uh, on a timely manner, literally on a real-time basis on these particular charts, both on the indices, which includes the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000. Those are the primarily the two ones that uh, two that we trade on. Uh, when it comes to index uh, uh, trading, and and of course on the individual stocks. So first and foremost, what you see in the background is the chart of the S&P 500. Here's a couple of very very important things here, and I, and if you if you can remember, then I suggest you write it down. It's how you set up these charts are critical. Just by looking at these candles is not going to tell you heck of a lot, because these the data feed that come out of uh, of Quad, and keep in mind that Quad, the system that you guys got a very discounted offer on, is head, used by hedge funds and institutions. It's not used by the average person. Okay, and that's how I came to know about it back in my old days, and so the more effective and powerful we get in using this, we will see immediate benefits, and I mean immediate benefits to profits, both on the long and short side. So let's start off with the setup. Okay, let's take an empty screen. One second, why is this here? Windows 10 is strange. You know, it just does fun, funky stuff. It's very good, but it's strange. I don't know why this menu bar is not disappearing now. Just bear with me one second, because I need the bottom part. All right, let me just say yeah, because uh, uh, I don't know if it happened to your computers too. If you're Windows users, they automatically updated, upgraded Windows 10 for free on the systems. Has that happened to you guys? Only on one of my computers. On so one far. of your computers. Okay, okay. So I'm not the only one. But this is fine. It's actually faster. Oh, come on. This is really annoying. <laughs> No, I don't want to lock taskbars. Okay, so I have to do this. I have to improvise. So let's take an empty workspace, okay? I guess it's not an empty workspace. Uh, let's take an empty workspace, just like this. Now, you got to do it exactly the way it is, and then you can add whatever you want extra that you want to do it, but I'm just showing you the, the way it's done. You first go to settings. Go to chart properties, go to bar settings. The bar width I normally keep as eight. Go to general. And do nothing. Uh, one second. Fonts and stuff don't bother. Colors, sometimes this might come out to be a little bit, you know, you can change colors basically. I haven't tested with a uh, uh, white yet as a white background, but I'll I'll do that. But generally, what I use data view background, I uh, I 
uses the dog background. Very important that you guys do this. Okay, so it's nice and clear. Okay. Then you go back to settings, go to chart style, click fill down bars only, hit OK. Bingo. Now it's a more clearer thing. You can see the movement of each of these candles, which you guys have, you know, you guys have been following uh, Quad, you know it, but I know it like, I know it a lot more in the sense that I've been using it much longer. You can see that liquidity pump going up and down as these candles lengthen and shorten, lengthen and shorten, expand and shrink. This candle expanding and shrinking, this is a daily bar, by you. Okay, and, I, and, and, and again, for trading purposes, you don't necessarily use daily bars. You can take a glance at it, but you know. But these candles, as we all know, each of these candles moving up or down is a lot of money if you catch a directional bet, even intraday. Low end of the candle, look on the right, 673 bucks. Up and upper end of the candle, 707. So that's 30 points, right? 30 points. So that's a 30 point candle right there. We think the world is ending when a stock goes up 30 or goes down 30, and it's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, but this, these, these type of algo HFT charts put things in perspective. Looking back at it, it, really, it doesn't even look anything, right? But that's a 30-point move. Either make or break you on your options trades. Yes? Yes. Exactly. Okay. So then, I, then let's go back to this, logistics. So go back to chart style, we did that. Then, very important, you want to make this palatable to yourself. You want to put a structure on this freewheel in, 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 in this freewheeling picture so that you can trade on it. Just looking at this, you can be you can trade on it, believe me when I tell you. So go to draw. Sorry, go to study. First thing you do, you scroll down, look for Bollinger Bands. Click that. All of a sudden, it's falling into place. Go to study. Scroll down. What do you, th what do you think I'm looking for? What's the most important uh, internal that we use? Oh, the stochastic. Correct. Put fast stochastics first. Fast. Bingo. Gives you a picture. A picture is forming that you can make money off. Go back to study. Go all the way down. And look for slow stochastics. There. This has given us, and I'll go over this obviously, my predictive, one of my predictive analysis right there. I can see what's, what's going to happen. Then go to study. One second. You want to make this more, you know, a little bit more precise. You go, you're looking for moving averages. Moving average one, you got to put in three if you'd like, because the three most important moving averages that we use, that's worked tremendously for me, is the shortest one, which is the five day, then the 34 and the 50. So you need three of them. Go to moving averages. so many of these.
hardcore internal indicators that you can put. Okay. All right. Then, follow this carefully. Let's say you don't like this yellow color. It's a little too noisy. So you can go here, edit, you can change the colors. Okay, you can change the colors or you can, you can, you know. Ribbon is blue. Why don't I make the ribbon a little bit easier on the eye and make it whatever that color is. Everyone follow me so far, what we're doing? I see what you're doing. I just didn't see when you put in the moving average, the five. Uh, the yeah, I haven't, I, I haven't calibrated them yet. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but you're thinking in the right direction. Whoa, that's a glaring color. That's killing me. One second. That's too loud. What did I do here? That's too loud. That's better. Okay, you can you can talk around what I put whatever color you want. Now we're going to look up here and moving average number one. We go to edit. We use generally use and try to match my color so intuitively you know what the moving average is without you know I I normally use this orange whatever. So that's for the thirty four. Let's do this red for 50 day where's my third moving average there and I normally use yellow for the five day now we have it this line is automatically it's within the Bollinger's it's actually the midpoint the moving average of the Bollinger not for the overall chart and that's why it says here moving average high is the high point low is the low point right the two ribbons upper Bollinger lower Bollinger moving average you can you can you, you can show it or you can not show it. It's up to you. Uh, let's move this to the same color as we are using the any and do stop me anytime you're not getting because I'm going really really slowly. So don't you know? Don't do yourself a disservice by say by not ask stopping me because this is a small this is a, sh uh, a very tight session. It's it's you yourself and Exeda and uh, and 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 Fisheye. So feel free to keep in it as an open forum. Okay. So now we have a picture developing here. We have the lines here, the 50, the 34. This is the midpoint of the moving average of the um, of the actual Bollinger's. And then you have um, and then you have the and then you have the yellow line diving. That's obviously the five-day moving average, right? With the with the shop moved down on Friday overall by the time we ended. This is obviously, you know, moving down. So now we have a picture developing here. So let me get into let me get into uh let me pick uh Just trying to, I'm going to just spy here. Why not? All right. So now we have a whole picture that's developed. So you have all this set up, and right in the lower end corner, you will see this small button. Oh, come on. 
Okay, that's better. A small button here saying lock, so you can say lock. You can go up here on the file. You can say save. All right, so now it's saved. Everyone got this so far? So you have to lock it and then save it. Yeah, you can do it whichever way. And and uh, and yes, you lock it. I always lock it and then I save it. So now it's there. You don't have to reset it back up again. Okay. All right. All right. Is everyone getting all this? Yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Now we'll do the analysis part and then first the setup part. So now we have the most important tools that we have, what that we need. We have the volume. We have the nice stochastics, the fast stochastics, and then we have the slow stochastics from a swing standpoint. Great. This is the daily chart of the SPY. Now I have it drawn here with all my lines and stuff. This is a one hour chart and you can obviously toggle back and forth. You have to toggle back and forth. So we're going to go rename workspace and I'm going to say SPY D as in SPY daily. All right. Then you can drag this. Come on, baby. Good. So you can now write next to the SPY 60 minute that I have. And I'm going to call this rename workspace SPY I'm just going to call it one hour because that's what I use as, as the term when I'm putting these up. All right. So everyone's with me so far, right? Yes. Okay, good. So let's go to the SPY daily here. So you have the full picture. Very, very important now that you have this. This is a daily view. You can see what's going on, the shape thing. Here are the things you start watching, first and foremost, when you're looking at the bigger picture. Then we're going to get into the shorter term picture. Is which way are these Bollingers going? Start training your eyes to look at the shape of the Bollingers. The shape of the Bollingers tell you whether or not there's a trend change about to happen. Now markets be super volatile, trend changes can take weeks. An overall trend in the market doesn't change in one day. This trend changed before the final massive crash took from, look at the bottom, November 3rd, 2015 to almost a month and a half right end of december so you had you had a trend change that took place over a period of almost 80 days month and a half from november till the end of december and then the trend just abruptly changed these were all false false moves right Dragon bullish pattern, boom, and then bang, bang, and then started to go up again. So this could have gone this way and broken out. There was no, you know, guarantee that this was going to do this. But we do have some, some sort of indication based on the internals that we're going to look at next. So the same thing here, okay? We have, we are holding the 34, as I said. We had the 50-day moving average that's around the two, two, two or three level that I that I showed clearly as a level of major support. So you could do this and actually come down here, bounce again, make may possibly a higher low. If there's this, if this is the trend line drawn, downtrend line drawn, it can hit here, it can come down, it can try to break that, fool all of us, hopefully not fool me too much, and then. Do this move. Does it have to be a 2,000 point move on the, on the market? No, but even a 1,000 point move, as I've clearly shown, brings us back into this 1960 range on 196 on the spies, 
which is still okay because that was the breakout level if you remember this big dragon bullish pattern this was the breakout that happened in March so is it not possible that the market comes and test this breakout again absolutely absolutely can if it falls below this then the forces of nature most probably brings us to test the 1800 level which I think is also a powerful tradable bounce level however going back and kissing 1800 will terrify and justifiably so in my opinion the market to the point where I don't think we're gonna see another one of these humongous bounces that we that we have encountered if we go back and test uh, let's say you know we do this stuff and we crash down to 1800 in my opinion by that time it'll weaken the 1800 level it will not be a straight line down it just doesn't work like that shorts have to cover the market is defended by serious market you know but large large uh, mutual funds and stuff like that it'll probably bounce up a little bit where's my mouse okay It'll probably bounce up from here, move up to this level here, which is the breakout level again, 1940, and possibly, you know, do this again. I doubt, and I could be wrong, if we get, if we go to 1800 again and then pull another one of these humongous moves, in which case we are, at least I will, try to put a decent sum of money down here and just hold it. Because none of us has really successfully done it, right? None of us successfully put in, you know, a few thousand dollars here and taken out almost six figures up here. None of us have done it. Yeah, we've done very well on, on in, you know, on, on, a, on many different moves in between this thing. But as in bu buying it here and saying, okay, the pattern symmetry is going to be very similar, similar to every time it's happened, which we talked about. So maybe this time we can give it a shot with a limited amount of money. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, is everything, it's, it's things flo uh, flowing smoothly? You guys are getting what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I don't want to lose anyone here. Uh, uh, the, the seashell. We kind of veered away a little bit in talking about market, uh, uh, market uh, uh, trend forecasting. But yes, what was your question? No, no, no. You're not losing me. I'm following you. Where, where I, um, and I'll say this for Jim and Exeta. Okay. Maybe they do the same thing. Uh, I always find myself um, getting out of the trade too fast. I look at the hour, the thirty, the fifteen. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to cover okay. that. I'm going to cover that. Believe me, it happens to me too. Okay. I I I feel like slapping myself. I actually felt like slapping myself on Friday when one of the trades I could have held longer. I felt like slapping myself actually the day before when we shorted. Remember? And Jim, oh, oh, Jim, Jim, Jim sold, I sold a little bit later, and then look what happened the following day. It just, you know, it's just part and parcel of trading. You know, in the old days, I used to really, like, despise myself, like, why am I doing this? You know, I, I'm the one calling these shots. Why am I not following through with everything? But it's hard because there was no indication whatsoever that the next day that the markets would pull back because the markets actually had, a, you know, just the way on Friday, the markets had a very powerful reversal right at the end, and we're going to go over all that stuff. But don't don't fret yourself about that too much the more you do it the better you're gonna get because these are volatility uh, algos okay when I bought those calls at two bucks two and a half dollars I mean the, the puts yesterday they went to a buck forty I was upside down four figures and then they turned around and you know where they went okay so it's not that easy a read if I have difficulty reading trust me a lot of people are having some serious things Hold on for one second. Hold on. Seashell. Yeah. 
Uh, what's your first name? Alita. Alita. Hi, I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. My husband is a fisherman like yourself. He loves it. Big blues, <laughs> right. big blues, huge blue fish are coming in on uh, the high tides here on the Jersey Shore. Oh, my God. Uh, that's, uh, that's cool. Yeah. You're, you're a little bit ahead of us. Well, I'm out in the Hamptons, on Long Island. Uh, hey, I've got to ask you, Jim. Are you running TOS and Quad at the same time? I can't I, do that. I'm getting can you hear me? Crashes. It's Hi, uh, too much. Guys, data. can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm back. We're going to talk okay. about the logistics of running different systems. You got to spend a little extra money to buy another uh, laptop or desktop. I mean, a CPU. They're damn cheap. You have to do it. You can't yeah. because then you can then you start seeing the difference. Our next session, we're doing we're going to do a couple of these things here. Okay, you will see the fundamental difference and how these charts operate in a volatile market versus how TOS operates. You don't need anything else other than TOS and Quad to really, really to do it. Quad is a professional environment, right? Professional meaning it's a it's an algorithmic driven chart. So they react differently than what how Quad reacts. I'm sorry, uh, Quad is a, you know, uh, is, is, is a hedge fund tool. And uh, think or swim, TOS is equally good, but it gives you a slightly different signal than this one. This one gives you a much faster signal, which is good and bad because it could be fast in getting in, but then it also starts to give you signals to get out and, and then turns around and goes the other way. So let's look at these things here. So the, we're looking at the daily chart here, and what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna look at, um, we're gonna look at what matters during the day. So I use, I flip, you, there is, remember one thing, there is rule, the biggest rule in trading and in the market are there are no rules. I think we all, understand that very well. Within the chaos, there are a set of tools you can use. And this is one of the most effective ones in order for your intraday trading or even for your swing trading. But if you think that a one set of time frame and a one set of uh, rules will apply, it won't. So just get rid of that notion. And I know, you know, you guys have been with me long enough to understand that. This is not a simple, you know, one plus one equals two type of thing. And the reason it is because that's how these machines have designed it. The machines have designed only one thing, to completely go back and forth and go after retail and professional invest, uh, 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 traders to, to get them to think differently. False signals happen all the time. That's called spoofing, right? They send out big orders. They're going to buy 100,000 shares of Apple, but that's garbage. They're going to buy 100 shares of Apple. So that type of stuff we can't get away with. That's, you know, that's the nature of volatility. So saying all that, the simplest, the, we start off with the basics. The basics is to study the, the stoves. The stoves get really over, oversold, they will bounce. Now sometimes they get oversold and they stay a little bit oversold. Look what happened on Friday. So we're, we're going to look on Friday right here. Fr when did Friday start? Friday started here. You can stretch it to get a better view, drag it, Friday 9.30, the day started here, but Friday started earlier on. Remember one thing, if effective targeted trading like we do was easy, everybody would leave their day jobs and do this all the time. It's not, but therein lies the opportunity to make real money which I've co consistently shown in between losses, no question about it, but still the losses mostly come, to be honest with you, because of our timing and our head. And Jim and me have talked about this, you know, before extensively. We're, the, we're jumping the gun. We're doing not necessarily stupid. We are reacting to our immediate res uh, uh, primal response. Like, oh boy, okay, I'm down. Like I'm getting out. And the markets are obviously an unknown factor. Just because a candle's moving higher doesn't mean it's going to go on higher. So we don't know. You know, when I'm buying something here, I don't know whether it's going to go up here. Some people expect me to know, but good luck to them. So, but at least I can give a format as to where they might go. So the easiest way of doing this, which we know, is Friday starts, so you get this 
first you look at you know candle uh, understanding the patterns of candles just use it simple a reversal candle is a reversal candle a reversal candle in red is not as powerful as a reversal candle in a, a this is almost like a hollow candle reversal a large hollow body on the green candle is far more powerful than like this than let's say this but it's a reversal candle this is an invert inverted hammer that's negative but somebody waited to you know maybe 30 seconds and got in maybe a little bit later or maybe five minutes they try to short it here look what happened the next point that's what machines do they're moving at breakneck speed nanoseconds right and we're trying to think in minutes how many times have I it has been that before I could even put the order in takes off it happens to you guys right Yes. Yeah, takes off like bang, like oh my god, these S and P calls, they were like at six and now they're seven and a half. You're chasing it at seven and a half. You're like, oh what should I do? Next thing you know, it's eight, eight and a half. By the time you get in, by the time you get in, it's nine. You get a little bit, you wait two seconds and it pulls back. So that's where the quad comes in as important. There's no rule based thing. That's why quad comes in. So let me finish and I'll take questions in a minute. So bottom line is Nobody's asking people. Just don't take me the wrong way, because this will be an, uh, a free, you know, it will be uploaded on on YouTube. So people will think, oh my God, these guys want to be like robotic five second traders. No, I'm just giving you an idea that if you want to trade some of these things intraday, whether it's stock, whether it's a, with the indies, uh, indices, S and P, R U T, I W M, SPY, then get ready for this. Don't expect like, oh, it's going to be a nice little run for the next, you know, for remainder of the day. It doesn't work like that. That's what I'm getting at. So this is specifically for short-term trading we're showing. And then, of course, the swing charts, you can look at the overall picture and what, what it looks like. Like I just you know, sh showed you the Google one, but I'll, I'll go over that in a second if we, have, if we have time today. So where's my mouse? All right. So here we have sharp move down. Stows oversold. Zero can go below zero yeah you can go below zero I guess anyway zero so good tactical bet seeing the reversal candle to put in a trade so if you let's say you bought this and people uh, you know if you're playing intraday for Friday you got to manage to get in at around giving you some ballpark numbers which are correct let's say two bucks goes up at this point it's probably at three but then the candle does this comes down here so your your two bucks at that point these things go down to maybe uh two first it goes to three then it goes to two and a quarter you're like oh boy but the candle is still solid you you're not just following the candles you're following the stochastics the stochastics are rising so you're sticking with the trade so what would i do i add more at this two and a quarter Okay, then it comes, then then you just see that big move. What do we hear? And then so it goes from two and a quarter. At that point, it's three and a quarter or 350. You're feeling like a hero. A lot of wowzers coming in the, in, the, in the chat room, okay? But the wowzer, a lot of the wowzer people have it, didn't buy here. They're trying to chase right here when it's at 350, 360. Guess what happens within the next literally 30 seconds? That 350 goes down to 275 because the candle pulls back. They're like, oh man. Most of them, they sell. Then the next minute, the 275 jumps up to 375. They're like, oh man. I can't even do this. This, this uh, <laughs> so maybe some of them say, you know what? Nah, this is real. It's gonna go higher. So they get in right around that three seventy-five four level. Let's say they get in at four. By this time, hold on. By this time, follow very closely. We get this red candle. Where is the stoves by then? Overbought, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. 
so that for so at four bucks they get in thinking oh it's all good because they're looking at just prices not the internals I generally tend to take a point or two out of these things. A point is 50%, two points from two bucks is 100%. I mean, come on. So these four bucks immediately drops down to three. By this time, the trader who is not following the internals is finally given up for that day. Because, ah, market's too crazy. You know, the same old stuff that you hear. Nothing. You just have to follow. If you were going to play this game, if you're going to play this tight game on this side. Now, this is a more very short-term five-minute chart that I'm showing. We're going to go over this on the hourly, too. On the hourly, things don't get overbought that fast, obviously. So what I'm so by this time, if you want to do a quick trade, we made a hundred percent while um <coughs> excuse me, while whoever got in right around here. Maybe got a little blurb and then comes. Once you get overbought, you don't want to be, you know, obviously, you don't want to be going chasing. Then you get a pullback. Same thing. Then you, on a weak market, what else do you have to watch? You have to watch the shape of the Bollingers. Which way are the Bollingers going? Down. They're going down. Then they start to create a double bottom. One double bottom was created at noontime. One was created at two o'clock. So now the market overall for Friday, if you dissect it, has created a large dragon bullish pattern. Okay, now where did this dragon bullish pattern? This is the neckline. All right, this is the neckline, the top here and the top here. Whether this neckline breaks out and we go and revisit and complete this pattern at 209.40, I don't know whether that happens, you know, first thing. But what what happened to the to the stoves? They got overbought again. Let's switch to the one hour charts, which give us a more of a intraday swing direction what might happen. Now in very choppy days, just so you know, you cannot tell what the next move is gonna be. So let's look at the hourly which makes more sense. Let's drag it down here. The week started on one, on the 20th. I'm sorry, the week started on the 25th, right? So look at this view of the markets as we, as we are seeing it. <clears throat> so look what happened on the hourly. On the hourly, we had we got overbought, which looked great, at the close on Thursday, right there, right? I'm getting confused. Okay, this is the 29th, so this was the 28th. This was Thursday, okay? Yeah. So sometime by Thursday, um, what, what? hold on for one second. I got, I'm not sure what's wrong with my dog. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. One second. Back. Yeah. All right. Um. This was, look at the bottom, 12 p.m. on the 28th, on Thursday, before the market gave in. Not going to go into the details of why the market gave in and stuff. That's you know that's a, that's a different thing. We're talking about reading the chart. So right there, right there, 12 noon. If you were tracking this as one should have been, and we shorted, and you guys join me too. Oh come on! 
right there. So if you see a, 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 a overall on the one hour, when you see things overbought, this is the 28th when it started. Right at that level, you have to measure where it is against the Bollinger's. And you have to look to see what the stoves is. It's really as easy as that. This is the point where you get the markets going higher comments. Okay, this is the point. Oh, hold on one second. I really sorry. I gotta send this text. Hold on. Kim, you had a nice trade on Thursday. I got out earlier than you got. Yeah, I I knew I should have stayed in longer too, and uh, yeah, I, I, I just I work at the regular job and I can't think about it sometimes, so we have to shut it down, you know. Oh, I understand. Okay, sorry. All right, follow me, and then yeah, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. So so right there on if when you see things getting overbought in the one hour, it doesn't mean that it can't. You know, I'm not giving you the variations that might happen. I'm just showing you the basics. Okay. So please understand that. I'm just showing you guys the basics of what you need. There are many variations to this. You can get you can get overbought and stay overbought for a bunch of hours or for for two or three days, right? I'm not two or three days, it doesn't last that long. For a full day before a reset. Okay? Well, that is another day's session because this was a this was an overbought condition which turned into a bull flag and bull flags break out, so it stayed overbought. So it's not like every time something gets overbought, it's just going to basically collapse down. Those are external factors in the market. That's my job. That's what I do in real time, updating people what I think it might be going on from the news flow that might cause these type of conditions to occur. All right? So just keep that in mind. Um, so, so then we get this big plunge down, mechanical sell. This whole sell-off on Friday was primarily because from a technical basis was because there was some huge, monstrous force margin sellouts because of the massive increase in the in, in, in the one versus uh, sorry the yen versus the appreciation of the, the yen rally versus the U.S. dollar, which we have covered extensively in our sessions. So when you get like that, you got to come up with those margin calls because a good number of hedge funds and institutional managers were short the yen, and the yen went the other way. So what do you think is going to happen? They, had, they were forced to sell big chunks of their positions, which included stocks, which included other assets. That's what normally happens, right? So this mechanical sell that you saw wasn't fund managers saying, oh, my God, you know, April's over. Now we're going to go into May, and we're all going to basically go, you know, start, start the next leg of the 3,000-point down market. I'm sure some managers shifting their position. That's obvious. It's the last day of the month. But that was primarily generated by global margin calls that started off in Europe and then washed on our shores and, uh, and, and needed to be taken care of. When are margin calls generally taken care of uh, in, in, the, in, in the biggest form that is sliced and sold? On Friday, margin clerks are not going to carry, uh, let's say, $100 million worth of, of, of margin sellouts and give them, enough, give them the time to go, oh, yeah, you have a whole bunch of days to take care of this. So that's, that was primarily the reason why that happened. Now, when this is happening, you have to start watching the Bollinger's. Very important. Very important. This is money talk, all right? I'm not BSing. When you see a Bollinger go like this and then just collapse, just straight down like that, that selling is going to continue. Meaning, if, when this happened, when the Bollinger just abruptly went from going like this to boom, your, that's your first sign that you need to stay short. Am I clear on that? Yes. Exactly. So here we are. 
people getting excited like oh yeah you know this is the that this is the point where all the big money that all the trades that we did were taken amazon linkedin expedia baidu whatever the stuff all these earning stuff you basically sell 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 i put the put the targets i mean put the trading uh, sell out i mean alerts out there because right after that yes the stock stayed strong but they were not at their highest so do you get this waterfall decline when you see a large candle of this magnitude like you started to see here you start getting out of dodge for then with any large profits period it's not rocket science all right that candle can either reverse up but there's a higher probability given the size of the candle okay like this one this one actually wasn't that big but still and it bounced a little bit but once you saw the settle candle like this on the hourly chart on the on the algo uh, quad algo hft platform and you can see that in toss too but here you see it clearly you want to get the heck out of dodge and go put on a nice short hedge you don't know that this this bollinger is just going to collapse like this this is where the two dollar calls go to six eight 13 we don't know whether it's going to go to 8 to 13 it's not like it's a straight line down they move up move here and oh, i'm sorry they go from two to four to six you know this is the easy money made because based on the candle read and the sudden collapse in the five day moving average is just like that and this stochastics just go plunge now this is an hourly chart, right? In between, it didn't look like this. You know, it was maybe trying to do this, turn around, maybe found some support here. But whatever the case, it got oversold. Okay, so this was a pri Friday was obviously a primal opportunity to to like we did in successive stages on the short side. Then, I have moderate so shorts out there on the market. In the form of the SU, uh, 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 SPX and RUT as a hedge. One of my members asked me on the side, "So should I, you know, got a big position on this hedge on the side?" I said, "Look, on the hourly, we're actually getting a buy signal here. We're getting a big buy signal here. Look at this. This yeah. candle, this candle appeared at 3 p.m." Okay, so depending on the time frame you're looking at, because we're going to look at the daily too, and you'll and, and, and you'll see the difference. The daily showed a inver uh, showed a hammer reversal where the market where the machines wanted to print. And uh, can can you two answer what where they wanted to land up by the close? I put that down on the chart. Yeah, the thirty four SMA. Thank you. Daily. They, they wanted to hold those lines still going up over the daily SMA. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Very important. I even marked that one because those are important because how they paint, this called painting the tape, how they paint the tape because machines will pick, uh, computers will pick up and say, okay, market still above the 34 day moving average, blah, 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 blah. Could be a false signal for all we know, but that's how they wanted to paint the tape. So anyway, so this is how the puts would, would have worked. Now, right here, we started to see a basing, then it, then a slight double bottom, and it looks like now it's going to go higher. So people, so people, someone, okay, how much higher can it go? Well, you can hit, you can, you can see here clearly. We have the 34. The uh, remember the five tracks fast moving. So the look at the five is already turning, and. And then you get, so you could, you could make your own judgment call. You say, okay, here is a cluster point where a lot of resistance and stuff happen, resistance, support. You know, market was moving here before it, you know, cracked, sh shot up. Most bullish person will say, oh, yeah, we're going up to 211 on the, on the thing because that's the upper Bollinger. A more practical approach would be that, okay, if we get a big move up, then we could open up or somewhere around 208. Because that would be a point of resistance on these downward sloping moving averages. By that time, Monday morning, if futures open up six, seven points, 
will be overbought back there again. Once you get back there, I'm not going to be a big chaser. I'm a big buyer of things at these oversold levels. So here, you wait for a little bit of a retracement, possibly down here. But it never makes it easy. It goes like this, right? But once you stay overbought for, let's say, half an hour or so, you know you're going to get a reset. Just the way it works. Now, here is something which is very bullish. So we have to be, any type of dips we see, we need to be maybe... First of all, this, this is a short covering candle. Look at that. The size of this is 3.4 million. I'm sorry, third 340. What am I reading? The, the, yeah, 3.4 million, right? At three zeros to it, 3.4. Yeah, 3.4 million. Right there. So look at the size of the candle. Forget about the numbers. Look, big short covering thing. Then you have, this is what would be technically bullish. And I mentioned this before too, that I'm starting to see the stows on TOS and stuff, including this, I think, starting to get, we got so oversold that on the dailies, they're turning. Now, whether or not they're going to go to full blast all the way up to overbought positions and we'll be up three, 400 points fast during, you know, in the first part of the week, I don't know. But look at this. This is actually very bullish. Now, is it possible that the pressure of this sell-off doesn't cause an immediate move up, but does this, where it moves up, right? Moves up, sells off lower, and then makes it and then makes a move up, but not enough to get up up there. And does this? Is it possible that we go up here? move down further, causing a double bottom on the stoves, just like here, and then make a move up, possibly back towards 209. Let's draw a trend line. 209. Is it possible that the market is undergoing pressure from whatever sources, we know what the sources are, and that at this point, there's still a very decent sum of money to be made, but we have to play tactical. I'm not going to get into my long-term forecasting and stuff. I'll leave that for Sunday evening, but I think the market's tired here, at least for now. So anyway, so this daily stow, when it gets this oversold, expects a reasonable sizable bounce because if we move up here, fail down, create a double bottom, which are the best buying opportunities, as you all know, double bottoms, then you'll make a substantial move from here, possible failure here, and we see what happens. But reading the charts on a shorter term basis, I repeat again. It's not one plus one equals two. You have to mix and match. And over time, and this is the beauty of this thing, because I'm totally self-taught, right? No one taught me how to read these things. Just use common sense, which I know both of you actually have a lot more than most, most of the people out there. So the thing is, common sense says that we got two confirmations, one buy signal here, one buy signal on the daily. So we might move up a little bit, or fail from here and come down, but whatever, uh, uh, you know, of course, I can't really tell you from now, but if, if we get any other substantial dip first part, then that'll, you know, we, we need to get out of our, of our puts. But things change in two seconds. So let's move back to the daily. Okay, look what's happening on the daily. All right, I've showed this before. My gut intuition saying that this is starting to do the initial stages of a roll down. That's just me and my artist eye, right? My wife's an artist, not me. So I'm like, okay, maybe. I'm just guessing. I think it's kind of getting a little tired. It's like, hey, we need a little break here, guys. 
So that's my opinion. I don't think we're going to take out 2115 in any meaningful form. That's my opinion. So uh, I think that's going to be the cap for now. So let's keep that in mind. So let's look what happened on the daily. We got a sell signal. No question about it. This is a certain, a certain a sell signal. How powerful it is on the move up, we don't know yet. If we draw a downtrend line here, I just showed you, then that will be this downtrend line, possible breakout and test of the Bollinger, which I think is still in the making. Okay, 211. Still have a hunch. The other uh, uh, scenarios that we hit the downtrend line and then we collapse from here. In which case, you have to do swing shorts. In which case, what will the pattern look like? Tell me. What would this pattern look like? Well, you got head and shoulders. There you go, sir. Exactly. Do I think a possible head and shoulder is forming similar to this type of junction here? Possible. So be aware. All right? Because then it'll give you false signals from, oh, sure, a long, big strand. But keep in mind, and of course, that's where my value-added service comes in as to putting at my two cents in the picture. If that happens, the neckline is down here, which I've shown, also happens to be the 50-day moving average. This is the neckline. And if we break the neckline, we are going to hit 1960 real fast, which also happens to be the breakout level. See how everything matches? This was the breakout zone of this large world is ending type of dragon bullish formation, right? This is the breakout zone, 194, 196. So is it possible that we come and do the pattern symmetry of testing that breakout zone? Absolutely. What we have to very keenly watching is the shape and the trajectory of the 50 and the 34 day moving averages. The five day moving average is also important to watch because if it's doing a, you know, dumpster dive like this, okay, cliff diving, then obviously something is going wrong. You got it? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So on a shorter term trend, you follow the five day moving average, which is starting to turn down, will act as resistance on the way up too. So unless you see this thing move, you know, the, 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 the five day moving average starting to curl up again and do this nice dance up and down, uh, don't get overtly bullish because we, but we have seen this before. A bull will say, hey, what's the big deal here? We saw the moving, uh, the five-day moving average do all this stuff before. <clears throat> yeah, so, okay, he's done it before. But we are also talking about levels which are coming close to, you know, to uh, uh, a large overbought levels if you're just watching price, which we I don't do at Clueless A Trading. We watch the internals too. So let's look at the internals. And tell a story that the world will be like, wow, that service, they, you know, that guy really knew and his traders really did it. Well, let, we'll do it. We'll do it, every, we, we, we'll do it over and over again. Don't forget that Jim and Seychelles have been with me from day one, known me for years now from Stock Twits. You know how precise my forecasting has been. Now, how we handle it is a different story. So let's handle it very well this time. So here we are, oversold. So it, it bounces coming. No question about it. Now, whether or not the bounce does this, it should get overbought again. We don't know yet. We'll find out. Because if it does this and gets back into overbought, you know, over 80, the market will attempt at that point to hit this level. Clear about that? It's really as simple as daylight on that one. Now, this is a daily chart, so it's not something you expect intraday. This is where it gets worrisome. Look what's happening on the slow stows. Right. Please focus on the slow stows. Now the slow stows are, are, are starting to curl down. Now it started to curl down here too. But during that time, it also, it, it, I showed this was a consolidation triangle, but watching. This is when the Saudi Russian thing and you know we got hurt on the, or I think this was the day we got hurt on the puts. Everything's going good and all of a sudden like bang, you know. Now there are different reasons which I don't want to get into right now, but you already know because I've explained it so many times. There's a significant amount of institutional shorts out there. Uh, sentiment is very bearish. Every article that I read, it's like, oh my God, you know, there's so much cash sitting on the sidelines. 
on, um, and this is a very dangerous thing for bears. A significant amount of, uh, of institutional cash, especially mutual funds sitting on the sidelines, they're very underweighted stocks, believe it or not. So their stock allocations are pretty low. So they could, you know, that's why the market doesn't really do a real substantial correction because the cash comes in and buys these dips, these technical dips. All right. So that's already been explained. So here we have this. So how do I measure this using my thing? I draw a line here from the last one. Okay, let's say around 50, 50, 58. I watch this very carefully. If it bounces from here, very powerful. Breaks below this, then the market's going to break the 50-day. The other reason why the market might not fall that hard is we're barely up single digits and low on other indices, Russell 2000 and stuff, on the actual indices for the year. So a bear can come out and say, oh, we're up 13, 15% for the year. These guys are all nuts. We're basically flat to down for the year. So that could be construed as a contrarian positive. Just from a technical standpoint of portfolio management by the large mutual funds and the institutional money. We'll see. So this is worrisome to me that it's lowering down. Um, when was the last time? Okay, this remember. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Tops are a process. So this is a process which took over a month and then it fell. So is it possible that this is a process that will take maybe another month or so before it actually dumps the dives hard and comes down here? Possible. So let's go back to the thing. Watch the lines, watch the shape of the Bollingers, look at the stoves, which way they're heading, and on different time frames. Now, don't get too much of an analyst because that's my job to analyze the markets and give out some sort of you know uh, um, accurate thing. Just from a trading standpoint, focus on the 15-minute. And remember, you'll see many variations of candles and moves, but the primary variations are always the same. A fast-moving, a fast-moving candle is very nice money, right? Now, look at the 15 minutes, what happened? Case in point, all of a sudden, we're seeing 20,000 blocks sold at what time? At 3.45 p.m., see that? Yeah, I made, made that spinning top. Right there, that's a spinning top, exactly. Now, if somebody was watching this, they'd be like, they be like, oh, wow, look at this. But then at the same time, and this is what I want to impress upon people, other people who listen to this, that if you change the time frame to one hour, three o'clock shows like, like the last hour looks like there was a, just a massive buy. Right? 3.4 million, 3.4 million were bought. So all of a sudden the picture changes. But in the 15-minute frame, somebody dumped, you know, somebody dumped that uh, uh, thing. Now, let's look at the 30-minute. Uh, on the 30-minute, it's positive, too. So on a net-net basis, you want to give more weighting to the 15 and, I'm sorry, the 30-minute the and the one hour than the 15-minute. You follow what I'm saying? Because this is aggregate volume for that period. So the aggregate volume for those one hour was this. Gotcha? It's clear? You understand what I'm saying? So when you're trading these, you know, if you look at, because I look at volume too, especially big volume spikes. It's better to look at it on Thinkorswim, by the way. So here, by the end of the day, on the 30 minute, we were almost getting overbought, but we still have the slow crossover about to happen. And on the one hour, we are not overbought. Make this bigger once in a while. Okay. Not overbought. And the slow uh, and the slow stow is just about to cross. Now, whether it's going to do two little moves down and create a double bottom, we have yet to see. So the initial move could be a sell, then another move down, and then could be the real buy. Do you understand what I just said? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. something you know no one knows. We'll we'll find out. Now that's on the indices side. Okay, you can look at five minutes too. And the five minutes are helpful if you're planning to do a fast trade on something. 
like a Tesla five minute, which I'll show quickly, generated double the money. Bought them at a buck oh five or so. They went to buck eighty five, buck ninety. At one point went over two. Those were the lottos. So you can use the five minutes to play the lottos. All right. And it also gives you a picture of what's happening. This is Friday. This is Friday. Right? Friday started here, technically, you know, from the market standpoint. And if you look at the picture on Friday, it's actually not a bad picture. Now, is it possible that this big sell-off here, which was a spending top, inverted hammer, whatever you call it, if this is going to create the next move down or are we going to blow, blow above it? I don't know. Right? So any max move would be capped at around this 207 level and then we see what happens because this could be the pattern symmetry the market's going for by early Monday. But then it could be back down again. You got it? Okay, now let's look at the stock side of the picture. <clears throat> I'm gonna change the screen. Now you can do this with, you know, this is where I get frustrated with this program here because it's it seems a little hard to go from indice in, index to stock to you know when you're switching charts around. No, that's something logistically we can you know you can you you can fi you know fix. I know what you're saying, as in as, in as in what using the tabs. Yeah, I guess that's how you do it. You set up the tabs and you just jump from tab to tab. Yeah, because one of the things I am going to be doing, and I want to do it sooner than later, I'm, 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 I have already mentioned that to them and they're open to it. Have them give us a full-scale, deep-down tutorial on pure uh, uh, logistical setup on how to make it so easy that we can just skim back and forth. Like I, I use tabs. You know, I skim back and forth. It's not a problem with me. But I know I, there's much more to it. It's a very advanced program. So that, they said they would do it for free and have a webinar with us. Okay, cool. so just keep that in mind. I'm going to try to set it up for an evening, but they might want to do it at, uh, at some point, maybe close to 4 o'clock. I'll let, I'll let people know we're interested. But, so, because they will show us how to set. There's a lot of stuff here that I don't even know how to use, okay? But I think the faster that we, we know how to use it, the quicker we'll be able to drive this. Type. This is like driving a Lamborghini, to be honest with you, when it comes to charting. Right? You don't know how to drive, you're going to be wrapped around in a tree around the house. So it's the same thing. So they have more stuff in it. Toss is like that too. Toss is like that too. I'm still like discovering things on Think or Swim. Uh, but then at the same time, I don't want to be that mechanized where I'm losing sight of my actual brain, which is still human. You know what I'm saying? So, so doing that. So let's move on to the other screen. Done. Are you there? Are you guys see it? All right, so here's chart, chart setups. So how did I play uh, uh, this, uh, this thing here? So I wasn't even looking at Tesla, for example, right? You know, we're happy with uh, some pretty phenomenal gains on other stuff, and I was just like, okay. But if I was watching this, it's quite easy to play. You get this big Bollinger break, uh, breakdown. Remember, a pinched Bollinger always has an outsized move. So this was quite a pinched Bollinger. So once you cracked, that was the signal the stock was going to go down. If it cracked this way, that would be a signal the stock wanted to go to 260. Get it? So this way it went down, and you can basically see it stayed extended, extended oversold all throughout the day with the pressure in the market too. These things are not happening in the vacuum. This is happening because of circumstances out there too. So, so this, this would have been a great short. And right at this bottom here, I started to notice on this, I started to notice these things started to curl. I put out the buy alert at around a buck on the lottos. By the time they got here and reversed, because by that time you got overbought, you can see that very clearly on the 15 minute because it's a fast trade. The $1 ones were two bucks. Sweet clean trade. Stock went from 238 to 242. If you're playing the stock, you made four points on it, just on a scalp. Now, I simply followed. Hey, Joe. I. Joe, you you in? All right. 
Um, that's Joe Bastian, our uh, new member. Okay, one second. Now that I do the same setups here uh, on these things. This one I think is missing the five. Is it missing the five? Oh, the other thing I totally forgot to mention is the pivot lines. Oh, well, that's actually chart analysis, uh, but I still want to show it. Let me just move on to the S&P chart. Extremely important you have the pivot points on it so you know what you're moving in between. Switching back to the previous screen. <coughs> Bless you. So you go up to your study and you look for pivot, pivot points, click pivot point. Now what the pivot point does, it gives you the actual, all right, this is, this is, this is the power chart, right? Because I have a lot of my lines drawn in and stuff. So they're kind of mingled in with the pivot points. So it's hard to tell. So I'm going to switch out to, um, I'm going to switch out to the hourly. So now you can see the yellow is the is the pivot. These are the resistances. I didn't put these lines. These are lines automatically generated by the machine, and they're pretty damn accurate. This is my line, okay? Horizontal line. How do you draw a horizontal line? You draw a horizontal line like that. So you take that, you can click it, and I clicked it on the upside. You can change colors. You want to put that green, you can put it green. Okay? Just like that. Now, when you do the pivots, you can actually see an idea of what is going on. Because the points of maximum supply or demand, demand in the, in the supply at this point in the sellers and buyers, can be identified, and you can see how these pivot lines work. So put pivot lines on anything that you do. The actual framing of the charts and stuff, that's, I mean, that's my skill, how I do it. I've shown you guys, I've taught you guys how to do it. We can revisit that at a later time, you know, drawing all the patterns and things like that, but rely on a lot of the patterns that I put out there and then use, use yours. This to me, you know, you can draw a there. Want to make this parallel? I'm used to doing it. You can see, okay, yeah, it's good enough. There, there. Look what the market did. Right? Not magic. It hit it. Didn't enter the channel. Waiting to enter the channel. Will it enter the channel? Don't know. No idea. If it enters the channel, it's going to make a break first for the the gap here, 2075. It's going to make up to R1 right there, possibly here, which is R2. If a failure, then it's going to pull back towards 2080. And the bullish count would be up to 2110 on the upper Bollinger. Lower Bollinger, 2046. I would love to see 2046 to see a nice little clean wipeout. And possibly 2035 that I identified which, by the way, was echoed by one of the top guys on CNBC two hours after I started talking about this stuff. And I mentioned that on the post. Anyway, now you can draw a support here and say, okay, the market went to 2050, and I did call 2050, so it hit around 2050. Um, that's going to be support. That's how you read it. So make sure you put the pivot lines on it. Is everyone get that clear? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And Joe, yes, go to Best Buy or, or go on Amazon, better, okay? Next day delivery, free. Get Prime membership. I'm telling you, Amazon. Just get one of these, uh, one of these, uh, uh, which one do I use? Hold on. I use a Logitech, whatever model it is, you know, with the mic and stuff. You need the mic and stuff for interactive um, webinars. So get that or get... Um, Anyway, just order one as quickly as possible. Um, but get a headset with a mic. Don't get an external microphone and stuff. That's way too much static noise that picks up. So, okay, going back to this here, very mathematical, very technical. The trick is that when there's, you know, when there's this type of selling going on, where do you know it's going to turn and stuff, it's going to come to you guys, okay? 
it's going to come to you from from uh, in, in in time, just like any other thing, to scale. So let me move on to the other screens and show you a couple of stock charts that have been posted. So here's Tesla. Um, what's with this stupid? One sec. Ah, oh, so annoying. Hold on. I'm trying to get to the tabs. <laughs> what the? Okay, this is becoming a pain. Hold on. I'm going to drag it to the other screen. Okay, what's going on? Just, you know, the fact that I can't get this out is really annoying. It's not letting me do it. All right. Can everyone see this? Yes. Good? All right. Tesla 15 minute. Okay, good. So you see that. All right. Now, let's look at the daily. So I have my lines and stuff drawn on it. So on the daily, you have, you know, if you took out all, all the pivots and everything, I mean, the daily you're looking at, uh, <coughs> look at that. It's it's dumpster diving on the stoves, but it's not fully oversold yet to the point where it becomes a screaming buy, at least for a, for a trade. It needs to go, again, into the single digits right there. So somewhere on four or five on the, uh, on, on, on the stoves would be a, a, a terrific buying opportunity short term. The slow stows are not showing anything good. It's telling us that the stock probably goes lower because it needs to get down again in the single digits somewhere between four and eight to to call it a tactical buy. Now, intraday, what it does it, over a five, 15-minute chart has no bearing what the daily stows are. I mean, the daily picture is, correct? Because a bull can drive, you know, uh, the, 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 the argument that um, <coughs> it's below the Bollinger, this is one of this is one of my lines, and the reason this line was drawn because this was a multiple top that the stock eventually broke back on April first, April Fool's Day. Okay, broke out of. So basically, somebody might make a uh, make a point that hey, uh, the stock is basically now engaging the 34 day lower Bollinger, oversold on a daily basis or getting there. You have a kiss of 225, if possible, the 50-day moving average. But in that case, it would be way out of the Bollinger. And a quick, simple rule of the thumb is, if anything overshoots well past the Bollinger, you can put money down, which we do every day, that it's going to snap back into the Bollinger and then possibly, if it wants to go down, fail. I've shown this repeatedly. If you fall completely out of the Bollinger, okay, in this case, in the daily, it's a pinch Bollinger and it's, it's falling out. Let's say if it goes to 235. I can assure you that as long as the Bollingers are still kind of at this level, the stock, you, you will get a five-point tradable bounce within seconds, within minutes. It's just the way things happen, all right? If it gets too oversold, you know, it has that dead cat bounce if it's about to die. So the bottom line is that at this point, there's multiple points of, of interest here. These are all breakout levels that the stock is trading. 
So anybody who thinks that they are basically about to completely demolish the stock, you can draw it many different ways. I think between 230 and 235 is a fantastic buying opportunity, short term, all trades here. Remember, if the market is in a topping process, don't get married to any stock other than the swing ones we're betting on as buyouts and which look good over a couple of months and stuff like that. But if you're going to play these big cap trading stocks that we make some serious money on almost every day, don't get married to them, okay? Because you don't know what's going to happen the morning after. So anyway, so so that, the, that so using the algo HFT on a daily will give you a picture of what the swing picture is. Let's look at it on a shorter term basis. Let's say hourly. What can I say? I can't even tell you how many times I've played this hourly chart. And I have been early and done well. So, so the thing is, why did I open up that chain? Okay, so the thing is, where's my marker? Generally, you are now starting to, oh, I think to make this bigger, sorry, way too many things. One thing about the quad charts, you need a pretty par reasonably powerful computer. It's not that you need to spend a lot of money on computer, you just need to upgrade the RAM to the point where information is getting processed very fast. Because remember, you are not just getting charts, you're getting a whole code system platform where tons of stuff is coming in. You guys get that too, right? I mean, you can put your codes in there on the platform. Seashell, fish eyes. Uh, well, I, I put, I have the quotes on uh, toss. I know that, but when you open up quad, don't you? Do, what, isn't there opening face the platform? Oh, yeah, yeah yes. so that, that's what I'm saying. Is that is is I use quad purely for my quotes and stuff because I it, it's so much cleaner. It's like a table format. So what I'm saying yeah. is that you need a reasonably powerful computer because there's a lot of code information coming in plus these algo HFT charts that are populating on a second by second basis. So don't use a slow computer otherwise you, you won't last. Just just use use one. You got to spend a little money and you got to buy a computer. Do are you still using a laptop or are you using a desktop yet? No, I have desktop. Good. Good. So a, a, we'll talk about that at some other point but all you got to do is go to Best Buy and, and put in a couple of extra chips of RAM, random access memory in there to jack up your computer. If you don't do, and it costs you maybe $60, okay? If you don't do that, you're gonna be hurting. I'm just letting you know, because Quad is a very memory hungry program. It takes up a lot of memory. So so you need to do that. Now you, you use a what, you use, use, use a Mac? Yeah, I'm on, on an uh, iMac, and I have another uh, Acer monitor. Okay, so that's fine. So that's good. So I don't know about the iMac, what, how you can put the chips in there, but maybe find out from Apple. I'll find out from my son. He'll know, okay? Uh, because you definitely need uh, more uh, horsepower. So all right. So here on the hourly, the stock is, you know, the stock can, could have a bounce all the way up to 249 $10 here. But if, if you look to see how the stock is trading within the pivots that I've put in place, it's trading sideways. Then it broke down. Does it mean it's going to completely break down? Who knows? But I'm just saying from a trading range perspective, the stock is between 238 and, and uh, uh, on the highest level 260 on um, or generally trades about 255. So right there is another great trade, right? You can use it using the quad system. You got to watch the simple stows and see what, what, what it's telling you. It's telling you to buy it on the hourly basis. Unless, unless it breaks down more, the, the bowling just keep on getting stretched down. That's a different story. Okay, so you got to watch that. But the minute you see any sort of Bollinger stretch downwards, you know it's a buy signal, it's a sell signal. And the and the stows are going from overbought to oversold. Now, just because they got oversold here doesn't mean that you were going to have this inevitable bounce. Yes, it was going to come, but it didn't come till about half an hour later or so, or an hour later. And, this, and there was the bounce. Now, will the bounce continue? Well, let the let the you know let these moving averages show you the five days starting to flatten out the the 50 and the 34 is up at 249 the mid bollinger is at 248 or 247.63 see the color coding 247.63 and so all all that is there you know so i'm used to looking at this to me it's like uh 
I'm going to take this one out. Uh, to me, it's like second nature, right? So there you go. So looking at this, I could trade this stock for almost, uh, what, 200% on the calls if, this, if, if, if the pattern reversal happens. It's not rocket science. You could end your day by saying, okay, I made 200% on that thing. I'm not going to trade for the day. Great. So that's, 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 your, that's Tesla. Let's take a look at uh, Netflix, uh, Priceline, for example, which is a powerhouse. So here's Priceline's daily chart. Using quad has been extremely beneficial for me in trading the stock and holding it at certain times. And, I, and of course, my patterns and stuff that I transpose on them make a lot of sense. These lines are mine that I put out there for people to see. You can clearly see here we hit that line and then we bounce, uh, then, then we sort of you know, reverse a little bit. It is an inverted hammer, but still bullish. Look to see what's happening on the daily. Look at the stoves again. Looking fantastic wants to go higher. I wouldn't be surprised if price sign hits the upper end of the Bollinger. That's around 1380. Whether or not it enters the gap fill, who knows? If it enters the gap fill here, which I've shown, you're talking about 1400 to 1440. Can that happen on earnings? Absolutely. Is it possible that the stock basically breaks down below the 34 and the 50, hits the lower Bollinger at 1254, which is a 100 point drop or so? Yes, very possible. By that point, you'll have the stores deeply oversold, and you will get a dead cat or possible reflex bounce, which will take it from here and retest the 50-day moving average again, 1300. You're talking 40, 50 dollar chunks of move. Buy some. There's nothing cheap about Priceline buying the calls, right, or the or the puts. But buy a little bit, and you can feel the difference. I showed Priceline calls the other day, the 1350s or so. Just I think it was the earlier part of the week. They went up 300%. So again, using quad, you actually get a much clearer picture on what is going on with this monster of a stock. Many different patterns are visible, depending on what you want to look at it. You know, this could be this, or it could be this. The gap is here. There's a big fat gap here. And who knows? I come up with something really stupid, and then the stock basically hits the gap, which becomes, again, a strong buy, unless some fundamentals of the company have completely changed. We don't know. So let's look at this on a, uh, uh, let's look at this on a shorter term basis. Boy, many things moving on the screen. Hold on. Hourly. So let's take this out. You uh, the way you do it, you click right, just delete. So it's an hourly chart on the stock. Start drawing your lines on it. Take the mouse, do it. Want to do it like this? Want to do it like this? I wouldn't do it like that because that was sort of, I would do it more where I am getting maximum traction on the points. I'd do it like this. Or even this. There. Lower end of the Bollinger. 1327, right? 1327. Blue, blue. You don't even have to look. Upper end of the Bollinger, 1363. This is a positive pattern so far. Looks like it wants to know, even on the hourly basis. You have support here at 1310 or so. Below that, you got 1254. Any break of 1310 or so, yes, you would hit the pivot right there, this yellow line. This yellow line. This is a pivot automatically generated, and you put it, you know, put it on on top of it. I mean, uh, you just, you know, drop the menu and do it, as I showed before. R1, 1282. I'm sorry, S1 is 1282. Support one. 1327. So there you go. So when you look at this algo chart, because it's so mathematical. Just by using these two things here, okay, or you can add the slow stows to see what's going on. One second. You go to study, you go down. Not bad. You want to get a little bit more advanced. Remember, there's a lot more advanced stuff you can do with these charts, which I do on my own, which I don't always show because it'll just 
confuse people. So anyway, you can draw a line like that. So you say, okay, as long as the stochastics are, the slow stochastics, which are more powerful than the fast ones because it's giving you a swing picture, if they're keeping on climbing higher, I'm going to stick with the trade. Remember, 99% of the time that you didn't, you know, um, and all traders do that, some more than others, that you didn't make money on a trade long or short because you never stayed with the trade. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the God honest truth. I know it's tough to stay in a trade. Believe me, I know. Okay? And bigger the and the and your bigger the trade is, the worse you become. That's when you're like a like a like a, like a monkey on a hot tin roof, crazy. The bigger the trade is, because then you're like, oh my god, I'm down a couple of thousand bucks on that. Oh look at that. Oh my god, you know all that stuff. All of a sudden you're acting like many other emotional freaks that we are used to. So try to be as robotic, and one of the ways to do it is to keep trades within a reason reasonable level where you're not losing your mind. Yes, you make less money. So what? But if you make less money on multiple trades, it's better than losing a big chunk because you did something at the wrong time. Just always remember that. It's common sense. Um, saying all that, I get so juiced up sometimes on a particular chart. I'm like looking at my chart. I said, this is it. It's going to happen. And I just go in and I go in really hard. And the ch these type of algo HFT charts keep me on track, even though over the next 15 minutes, over the next day, I might not look right. But what does it matter? My standard line is charts are intact if I if they're truly intact. Can some traders argue with me and stuff? That's normal. That's only you know. And I said okay, eventually I win. Now if a whole chart pattern and trend change happens, that's a different story. So looking at this here, yeah. So you can do that. So let's look at the uh, so this that we saw and then we like the this. I have no complaints about. This is the fast stow. And this is a, what pattern is this? I know Jim will, you know, what's this pattern? You got a double top. No, no. Yeah, I, I yeah that's a double top. But this ascending what? triangle, correct. An ascending tri ascending and, wedge, yeah. You know, do they call it an ascending wedge? I don't know. Yeah, I think they do call it that. I call it ascending triangle. Very powerful formation. Very powerful because if this baby breaks out, I just showed you it's going to go to 1450. Easy. If Amazon can go up 70 bucks, this is a $1,370 stock, $50 stock. This can easily go up, and we've seen it before. We caught it once. We actually caught it many times, but caught a really big one with 150 points. Now, the whole kid and caboodle changes if. We break below the pivot, which is 1299, 1300. If we break below that, don't be a hero. The stock is going to fall rather rapidly to 1250. So, so the object objective of today's session is to make, and this it's, it's going to be an ongoing part, and people who are paid members, I will be working with them closely. I will be doing some live trading. Remember, these are static things you're looking at on a Saturday mo afternoon, morning. Imagine watching these live as I watch them constantly on these monitors, and you will have access to watching them you know, on a certain, let's say, one or two days during the week and actually trade off them. That's fantastic. That's dynamic trading, right? So I'll try to arrange that as quickly as possible. I'm going to test drive a little bit this weekend and see how that works. So for that, you'll have to have a dedicated screen, just so you understand that. All right, a dedicated screen, and and um, and I will pinpoint the levels and stuff that you can act on if you choose to. So, so the object of this, uh, uh, the objective of this, uh, here's Amazon, right? So here's your. I have to. I have to show this one. So Amazon, this is a chart that uh, uh, Jim, uh, Seashell, you guys have seen me draw many times. Uh, Joe has recently seen me post it. I didn't tweak this chart at all. All I did was put these little markers. That's my new thing, put these little markers. So it makes it easier. Okay? Guess where the stock went? Exactly where I said. And can somebody pinpoint before I draw it where I said it would go? Uh, I think it was like 680, 660. Uh, no, what, what, uh, not pat, uh, the, the, what, uh, um, what's the term for it? At what level would it go? 
the gap fill. Oh, the gap fill. There you go. You know what happens with this business? And I realized it is when somebody is, and again, this is not some brag statement, whatever, but in general, my accuracy with individual, especially on swing tr uh, trades, which really make the biggest money, um, and, and, and the markets and stocks have been very, very accurate. I wonder, and I still get a lot of flack, which is fine. I wonder if I was wrong most of the time. <laughs> you know, sometimes I laugh when I think of it because these type of things, when nobody is looking at this type of these, you know, what where something can get to, this is a pretty serious money trades. Need to effectively manage it to get there. But, you know, and this is not the first time it's happened. Now, and, and, and it's, it's, there's different components of how I arrived there. My brain, my experience, got to have the mental fortitude to do the take the trade. That's for sure. But more, also importantly, the tools that I'm sharing. Just to remind everyone else who's going to hear this video cast, there are very few services out there, trading services, who will go in that deep and actually show you what their inner workings are. Now, I'm not going to, I, I'm not, I, I can not physically, humanly possible, show you all the other stuff that I look at, do, and trades that I do that I don't post. There are trades I do I don't post because those, you know, it's just impossible for me to do that. Unless I do a live trading course and stuff, I can basically shoot out that these are the extra things that I'm doing. So my point is that that no one gets in this deep to do that because it's like, oh, I got to keep that holy, you know, I got to keep my, you know, secret sauce in there. But it's about sharing so that other people can get better at what they're doing. So saying all that, if I didn't have the Algo HFT quad platform, I wouldn't be able to draw this chart this accurately. This is like artwork. And I'm grateful to God that I actually was in the trade. Because there have been times where I've drawn some phenomenal forecasts and have not been in the trade. And some others have benefited tremendously. So the gap fill, and there's, there's resistance there. Some of you might say, so what do you think and what will happen after that? Well, I wouldn't mind if the stock comes down here, uh, drops another 20 points, holds this breakout level here. One second, where did it go? There. See? It can even come back and test this. It's not the end of the world. You're going to hear a lot of the end of the world scenarios. Oh, Amazon gone. That's the highest they'll ever see. All that stuff. We're going to monitor. Or it can come down to the bottom of the gap, lower gap as I call it, which is a 659 level right there, right? And then decide to make a move to test its highs. So all the scenarios are in place. But I could never do this stuff if I did not have the if I if I didn't have the luxury of using the Algo high frequency trading program. Some informational stuff before I close this out. Is um, members who are who listen to this and feel that they can they really truly want to take advantage of this very powerful system, let me know. Send an email to frank.r at cluelessate.com. I'll send you the information. This has nothing to do with me. I simply uh, have spoken to the company, and they have, been, they have said, hey, um, we're going to give your members a discounted rate. I've been with Quad for years. I can't count the number of years. And, um, and the gentleman is one of the owners of the company. And the fee is $120 a month. I believe that's a discounted rate they've given. It normally costs in excess of $400 plus to get their overall system. But they have given a discounted rate, which hasn't stripped down the main features, especially the charting features and such, which you can utilize. And believe me, one trade alone can pay for a full year's worth of quad, in my opinion. And you don't even have to have to be that big a trade. All right. So, um, so that's basically it. Any questions that I can answer before I wrap up? Because I have to go pick up my kid around noon. No, I'm pretty good, Frank. You're good, Jim? And and like I said, uh, let me just get... Hold on, just texting my son. 
he's, he's th this is great. The school is so rigorous. I mean, they're doing an AP preparation for their AP art history. So they're in, they're like knee deep in some European painters right now. You know, it's one of the lectures that he has to take and they have an AP test on it. So God bless him. <laughs> so I'm just texting him that I'll be there shortly. Okay. Uh, Seashell, my favorite. Um, question. Uh, I think I'm good. I was getting a little chart crazy because I had toss on one uh, monitor, quad on the other. But I think going over this with you, I think quad Wait, is uh, more more accurate. It's accurate, but you also have to use TOS. Now, remember, this is the first of a series of training sessions that I'll be doing specifically with Sirius Quad users and TOS users. I will be also going through, this is really where it gets into the heart of the thing. I'll also be going through a fine-tooth comb, how you can use Thinkorswim very effectively. So that will be coming up too. So we'll do a series of about five to, uh, we will do a series of anywhere from, I would say a good five to ten sessions going forward. Okay. By that time, I, I don't think it'll take 10 sessions, but I think it'll take at least six where you'll be able to really get into that zone of mastering and trying to understand how these two platforms work. So we'll spend the first half of our sessions on this and then the next we'll do it on the on the Thinkorswim. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes, it does. Okay. Because also, I'm, I'm a, I know you have to go, but just fast. I've got no, to get no, you. No, no, go ahead between the fast stochastics and the slow stochastics because that's where I'm getting a little confused. Okay, and that's okay, okay. <laughs> so here's, here's an easy answer, and Jim would answer that for you too because I know what Jim thinks, okay? okay. Is, uh, is the fast stochastic used for trading? The slow stochastics you primarily use on for swing charts or swing okay. trades, things you want to hold for a couple of days, for a couple of, you know, weeks are nowadays like crazy, but let's say week, two weeks. So the yeah. so but remember one thing the way where they start to become equally important is when you see both the fast and the slow and the and the slow get evenly overbought that's a sell signal bar none okay yeah. or you say you get to see or or you get to see them evenly oversold if you see that type of uh, uh, of of uh, uh, um what's the word I'm looking for inflection point all right. If you see that type of inflection point, you get a very powerful buy or sell signal. But otherwise, yeah. the slow simply is telling you that the stock has room to move higher. That despite short term, in, in simple English, what it's telling you is despite short term volatility, the stock is okay. So if we look on the daily stows, and, and then of course that you'll see a variation of, of different things. So in the daily stows, if you see it moving like this, this is so far good, right? right. It means the stock has room to move higher. Um, that's on Amazon. Let's look at something that hasn't reported yet. All right, let's. I, I just showed you the daily stow on. I showed you this one, right? Right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. One second. Look, this is good. This is on the day. This is hourly. Sorry, daily. So daily is telling you, yes, we can. We are, we are on our way of getting overbought. I guess the stock gets overbought uh, another forty points higher, right at the upper end of the Bollinger, right there. Right. Let's look at the look. Let's look at the daily to give us an idea what. So, what is the daily telling you? It's telling you that it's getting overbought, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The daily was like, screaming by here, at twelve fifty four, where I issued trade alert. It was also in the lower end of the Bollinger. That was it's screaming by here. It's starting to get a little dicey. Nothing wrong. It could easily do this, right? And, 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 and get up to the upper pivot at 1400. My personal thought is, if things are good with Priceline, they want to they wanna test, which I've said, which I've showed clearly. They're going to test 1430 to 1390. That's it. When you think people are going to get all excited about Priceline, when it's above 1400, we'll be sellers at that point. Right. Doesn't mean the stock can't go to 1500, but I think that's what's going to cap it on good number, really strong numbers out of it. Now, saying about what happened to Expedia, which we did extremely well on, up 10 points, options up about 200% just on Friday. So, given what Expedia delivered, Priceline might deliver a blockbuster number. Right. You got it? So, there you go. 
So we'll do a series of this uh, of these courses. Um, people on on the quad side, there will be a minimal fee involved because it will be done through some external services that, uh, from transmission purposes, which will cost a bit. So just to cover all that stuff, but nothing crazy. And um, and it will be the most helpful thing you'll ever do in your life when it comes to actual management of Think or Swim, and of course this Algo, you know, HFT program. So with that. Thank you so much for listening. Everyone else who's going to be listening to this on YouTube channel, feel free to send me an email. I'll send you the info. Sign up for it. And just like everything in life, it takes practice, and then it starts to talk to you. And even then, you got to constantly be vigilant. But it's an extremely powerful tool. And in this type of markets, and that's 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 why I, I basically is is so important to me that in this type of powerful market, I mean volatile volatility driven market, this is probably one of the few platforms that I have used, which has been, you know, which has been the best because it shows the volatility in the form. And when we do the live sessions, you will see, as you normally see, how these candles are dipping from red to green and the patterns are changing and right there is money. So that will be on the live side. All right, so have a great uh, weekend. Uh, I will, um, I will do a quick recording. Uh, I will do a Sunday session. Um, so if you guys can make it, that'll be good. Uh, I think we have to prepare for next week. But uh, if I don't get a chance to do that, then there will be a end of the week report uh, with a video cast out there. But I'll let ev everyone know by tomorrow afternoon. Okay. All right. Thank you again. And uh, I'll give you all the details on the on the on the um, uh, on the platform courses uh, once I have it set up. Thank you for listening and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye. Sure.